Banner, it's time to dazzle. Are you actually going to fix something this time or just put the dress and earrings on again? I was going to put on the dress and earrings. Hey guys, welcome back in to the Bro for Squad podcast. We are just a bunch of bros drinking beer, watching TV and movies. I'm your host, Jeff Hornacek. Joining me, as always, is the mad scientist, Brian Banner, for our review of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 6, Episode 9, titled Collision Course Part 2. And we are here to grade this episode like we do all of our TV episodes on the 4 Bro for Squad TV criteria, which is the acting the story, our favorite scene, and then any theories or questions we have going forward. So, Banner, this felt like a mid-season finale of sorts, especially because it was a part two of an episode. I don't know, like, sequentially it's not. Like, we're I don't two, even know what that means. <laughs> nor do I, but someone out there will. Uh, but what did you think of the acting and cast in season six, episode nine of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D.? Uh, I mean... It was fine, I guess. Deke annoyed the fucking piss out of me. Like Jeffrey he, Ward. <laughs> yeah, like, look, he has annoyed us really bad in the last season. This season, I'm not going to lie, like, he was all right. I, I didn't hate him. And then this episode, he comes back, and I'm just like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, I don't know if it's him. I don't know if it's the writing. It may be a com- combination of the both of the two. But, like, him and Snowflake, okay, it was cute last episode. I'm over it. And they're already calling each other Babe, which I thought Babe? Was gonna... <laughs> babe? No, it was so fucking stupid. Um, and I one... actually like him as the CEO, but now that he's back with the team, I'm just like, uh, no. Uh... Yeah, if he was still, like, a peripheral character, I would be fine with that. But they're trying to bring him and suck him in to this main thing, and it's... I don't like it at all. One person that I want more of, mainly because I don't know if I'm a fan or not yet, is Izel. I don't know the actress's name because I'm not going to lie to you guys. I'm fucking smashed right now. But I want Even more if Izelle. you were sober, you wouldn't know the actress's name. Yeah, but I have an excuse tonight. <laughs> She's good, man. Uh, yeah. I, I want more I, of her. I, think I don't it's... understand her character. I don't. I'm pretty sure she's playing that character very well, but I don't know yet, and I need more. And that kind of goes into story. But I am enjoying everything that I'm getting out of her um, because it's this weird, mysterious. Is she a beast? Is she good? Is she bad? I don't know. I'm not convinced that she's 100 percent bad yet. I'm not. Yeah, I mean, Sarge looks like more of an asshole by the episode, so the fact that she's his enemy might be like, maybe she's just an anti-hero, because to be opposing him doesn't necessarily a dickhead. Right. And speaking of acting and cast, I don't think this guy is an actor. I think he's like a bodybuilder who has been cast, so I'm, I'm not going to shit on him. Don't say it. Don't say it. Winston James Francis, who plays Jocko. I mean, Don't you go there. What are we doing, though, man? He's not Dude, an actor. He's not that bad. He's pretty bad. He's not that bad. <laughs> but I don't mind it. I mean, Jocko is like a pretty one-note character. Physically, he has the presence to play him. It's just every time he has like an ex- – like that one speech he gave about his brothers a few episodes ago, I was like, get the camera off him. You're killing anybody, this episode. Anybody that can suck in a jewel and s- blow the smoke out of both nostrils is a badass in my book. I would have loved to see some of the douchebags that they had come in and read for the part when they put out the casting call, and that was one of the requirements. And then I want to touch on this briefly. I guess we still don't fully know who or what his character is, but Clark Gregg is Sarge. It's not even that I don't like him as much as I like Phil Coulson. Like, he just does not have the same screen presence that he has when he is playing Phil Coulson. He doesn't, and I said this a couple episodes ago when him and May had that fight scene. Dude, it's just not believable. Like, it's not even, like, it's just bad. Like, it's not that, I I can't even explain it. Like, you just can't play fight or act fight good. Well, yeah, you're getting into the physicality of the role, which I'm going to touch on here in about 30 seconds. And my segue into that is the star of this season in terms of acting and the standout performer is Henry Simmons. I never admit that on pod. (laughs) 
He's been fucking incredible, dude. I mean, like, where we should have given him a bigger role two seasons ago because this is awesome. What he has given me right now, I'm like, let's nominate him for a primetime Emmy, bro. I'm just going to fucking say it. What DeCaster did in the um, Agents of Hydra season is exactly what Hen- Henry Simmons is doing in this season. Season Here on Brofor Squad, we will never admit when we're wrong, but fuck, this guy's good, man. He's... Well, I don't even have to worry about that because I've been on the Henry Simmons hype train since season four, probably. Yeah, well, he sucks. So, And somehow his biceps keep getting bigger. I don't even know how it's physically possible. All right, the story and the plot. So I don't have a plot synopsis ready, but I have my uh, three bullet point breakdown here. So... We have Izel, uh, and obviously Fitz and Simmons are headed to Earth. Izel has seemingly hypnotized every all the other crew members on ship. And her and Sarge have that phone call with each other where they're like, fuck you, you suck. And the other one's like, no, you suck. It's your fault. It's a drug deal gone bad. We've all been there, man. Uh, the S.H.I.E.L.D. team on Sarge's tour bus crashes into the Shrike Tower, and they basically have to hunker themselves down, which was pretty much their through line the whole episode i feel like and then at the very end shield rescues fitz and simmons from izel's ship they've seemingly defeated the shrikes and sarge and all is not as it seems i did not watch the next on agents of shield just because the way this episode ended i could imagine it was going to be a pretty big spoiler but this one obviously it's not but it it's presenting this illusion of crisis averted but it's you know it obviously isn't it's agents of shield so what do you think of the story in this episode So my first thing is what the fuck? Okay. So these, these demon bats that we've got, they take a special knife to kill them. Am I Mm -hmm. wrong? Yes. Just like my ex-wife. Oh, okay. But yet Daisy can just go and then she can just like shake them to death. And then all of a sudden billions of bats go away. Don't get me wrong. Fantastic CGI. Loved it. But like, what the fuck are we doing here? I'm Is guessing that not the most convenient thing ever. I mean, I would say that, but she, I'm pretty sure she like quakes them like to disintegration level to where the knife is like a non-factor. The point of the knife is why like, didn't, why didn't she just do that before? Weren't they like, Hey, you know what? Let's just see if this works. It seemed like the only way, reason they were able to do it was they were able to bottleneck them. Look, it's like, it's like going forward on first down. You've got three other fucking downs to do it. So you might as well take a shot. So whose side are you on? Are you against <laughs> her quaking them, or did you like it? Because now you're just defending it. You're like, go I, for it. <laughs> I I I think that it wasn't a great idea, but the CGI was awesome. When she did open the door, I was kind of wondering what they were going to do, because that quake seemed really risky, considering they had basically the equivalent of a nuclear bomb right. on the tour bus. I was like, should you really be doing that with the, that thing right behind you? I just didn't understand why there's supposedly, like, all season, we, they've been building these up to these really hard things to kill. And then she's like, oh, no, I got this. Let me snap my fingers, and they're all fucking gone. And she only killed, like, eight of them, and the rest of them just magically went away. Well, I think when the tour bus... I keep calling it a tour bus because that's what it looks like. That's exactly what it looks like. <laughs> like I'm expecting a fucking Kenny Chesney to come off of it. Um, when they crashed through the Shrike Tower, I'm pretty sure that fucked up a lot of the Shrikes too. Maybe. Because that was, that was Sarge's original plan. He had it on some autopilot to like drive through it. But I think the craziest thing for me in this story is at the end... So Sarge has seemingly been defeated. Izel basically let Fitz and Simmons go. Like, it's never that easy. So Mm-mm. something I've is I've got fun- a theory. I've got a theory. I'll give it to you here in a minute. All right, yeah, save it for just a second. You ready to move on to best scene? Let's do it. All right. You go first. My, so I had an honorable mention real quick. It was a, it was a line. And I always have, like, my favorite quote from the show. And my, my from this one is, uh, this is when the S.H.I.E.L.D. team is on, <clears throat> again, on the tour bus, and they're trying to disarm the bomb and I can't remember who says the first line, but someone says three minutes to collision. How's Oh yeah. Max says to Daisy th- over the speakers, three minutes to collision. How's it looking? And she goes like, we have three minutes to live, <laughs> which I thought was a pretty funny line. I cracked up out loud. Uh, so that's not my best scene. That's my favorite quote. So I'll tease with that and then toss it to you for yours, your favorite scene. No, you need to do your favorite scene first because okay. mine will, 
mine will develop a discussion. You talked me into it. So this episode is basically the epitome of stuff that you didn't like, I liked. Because my two favorite scenes were the Mac versus Sarge fight. And again, we don't know what Sarge is. So I think the fact that he can hold his own against Mac, we we can't really judge that yet. We don't have the full picture. I'm not that- disagreeing with you. Like it was it was a cool idea. The problem is is that Clark Gregg is not convincing that he can hold his own against Mac. Yeah. He I, did like, lose. I, he did it. lose, but like it just wasn't even fucking close. Like I'm sorry, it just it looks so fake. Like Mac was pulling his punches. It just I don't know. I there was one lying. there was one scene where Mac punched him or like threw him over a like a control console and I actually think it was Clark Gregg not a stunt double because like you could see his face the whole time. So I don't know if Clark Gregg volunteered like yeah dude flip me over that desk but at least give him props for he's running out every ground ball while he's out I, there. Look, I'll give it to you. Hustle, you got the hustle award. But <laughs> you're not getting the MVP. That's fair. Uh, my my other favorite scene was really just one shot, and it was when May stabbed that Shrike with the Fucking knife. That was incredible CGI. Incredible, incredible CGI. Incredible CGI. And I just thought that shot alone, I was like, "Damn, dude!" We I say want... this almost every week, but like, there's a, at least one shot every episode in Agents of Shield where I'm like, "Dude, that's better than a lot of movies that I see." They. They have their CGI on fucking point. And, like, I want that to be the background on my computer. That was so fucking good. That was badass, yeah. It was good. What was your best scene? So my best scene was Max's speech at the end um, when he's talking to all the remaining agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and was like, look, all of you that have been with us from the beginning, all the new faces, everybody that's been there through the ups and the downs, like – he was speaking to the agents of shield as a true director, as a true, like, look, this is what we have done. I took that as he wasn't speaking to them. He was speaking to us as the audience. He was speaking to us who have been there since season one and are like, look, this season or this, this show has kind of hit a lull, but you guys stuck with us and you guys are continuing to go strong with us through these highs for everybody that came on later, later on in the, in the series, we appreciate it. Like we're going to keep it going and we're going to make it worth your while. That's that. I don't know something about the speech and the way that he gave it. And and you alluded to it before. Like this is Henry Simmons season. Yeah. And I will never admit it, but fuck, he did a good job. And that's that scene itself. Like, I don't know. It spoke to me. It was, it was really, really well written really really well acted really really well directed even as he was speaking they kind of like showed everybody in the room's faces like they were look i'm ready to take this shot but let's go let's go on to the next mission i'm ready like <laughs> that's a go. cool way to look at it and i think that scene for me sort of solidified yes henry simmons has been the standout star but they're also starting to write the show more to where mac is i mean daisy He's the director Right, he's the main character, I feel like. I mean, we all kind of assumed that Chloe Bennett's Daisy was going to be sort of the focal point of the show, but she's actually really been brushed aside this season. This season, she really has. I mean, it's really the last couple seasons. (laughs) She's kind of the glue that keeps all the storylines together, but she's not the story. Yeah, I think after she realized her whole Quake powers, the writers have sort of been kind of like, okay, what's her next character arc? And if again, give the writers credit. If you don't have something compelling, then just focus on other characters, which is what they're doing. And we'll get to theories and questions here uh, regarding Mac. Um, do you have anything else for best scene before we go on to the last part of the show? No, I mean, I think I think that was it. Um, I did want to cheers Mac say. like from my own couch. Yeah. Oh, I was so ready to take a drink with him. Like it was. Like I said, it's just one of those speeches that like it's like the Independence Day speech. Like you could quote that to any like <laughs> high school football team before the play in game to the playoffs and they're going to go to fucking war for you. Yeah, exactly. One one thing I have to ask, I just thought of and I didn't even write this down. It just came to me. So when Fitz was playing darts, was he drinking a fucking Zima? He was. And he what traded, the hell? he was. <laughs> He was, and then he traded it with Gemma, and I... I wonder if there was a joke there that got cut or something. It it had to be something like that, or it could have just been like an Easter egg, because Deke last season had talked about Zima and how fucking good they were. 
Yeah. Yeah. So I think it may have been like a little Easter egg. Like, okay, hey, look, grandpa's drinking Zimas, so I have to drink Zimas. Oh, that's cool. Trend Pimple definitely pick up on yeah. that. That's the stuff I normally miss. So good. Yeah. I actually thought it was pretty cool. All right. Theories or questions going forward. So I have a, a first thing. It's one line that I picked up on. And again, Trend Pimp, this is where we need you because he always has, he always catches the stuff that we miss. But when Izel was talking to Sarge over the intercom, she had a line where she said that Sarge was wearing a skin, which obviously can be metaphorical, right? Like if you're pretending to be someone you're not, you can say that. But it got me thinking, maybe Sarge is the type of species that we know that like he's in, he's got Coulson's DNA, he's in someone else's body, but maybe he's like this, like a hermit crab type or like a men in black agar or Edward type uh, creature that it like can like go into someone's skin, a dead body. That's what I was thinking there. Do you have any thoughts on that? I do. I don't think you're right, but I think Izel is a different character as of right now at the end of the episode. Who do you think Izel is? Izel is Davis. Who was passed out on the couch? Yes. So Josh, jo- so Jocko goes one way, Davis goes around the other way, and they meet up up at the, like the top, right? Jocko goes up the, the stairs, and Davis all of a sudden meets him, and he's like, I don't know where she's at, but she was supposed to be up here. Then whatever happens, blah, 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 they end up at, back at S.H.I.E.L.D., and Davis passes out. And he's like, oh, I'm going to wear the Make America Great Again hat. And Piper, who like is Just fucking randomly disappeared. Showed up. Yeah, she's been like surfing Tinder for the last four days. Just decided, oh yeah, I'm gonna show up for the party, which is naturally like that's what she should do. It's like, oh, let's take a picture. But he's passed out. That's Izel. I think that she on the ship somehow took Davis, killed him, or captive him, or whatever, and put his quote unquote skin on and is now infiltrated shield. And now he is going to take over, or she, he is going to try and take over S.H.I.E.L.D. from the inside out using Davis as the inside man. Okay. So my theory there isn't too different. I just think Davis is dead for sure. Like, I don't know if Izel like, drugged him or did something to him that she did to the crew on, I can't remember the name of the ship that Fitz and Simmons had, but he was killed by Izel. Now, now to your point, whether like his mind was wiped and she's now inhabiting him or something, maybe that's like an ability she has. And maybe her and Sarge like used to work together or they were lovers. Or Ooh, something. I think they're lovers. That could definitely, they had that chemistry where it's like sparks are flying here. Across Do you the think, room. what about this? And I know I'm wrong, but what if they were lovers and Snowflake is their daughter? Damn. Sarge. But see, then Sarge is a version to protect Snowflake. Like, he just fucking left her with the agents of shit. Maybe just a bad dad. Yeah. Um, I have one other theory. I don't have any questions this week, actually. But I have a weird last theory. You feeling uh, right? I think so. My theory is Yo-Yo's pregnant. Ooh. Okay, with Keller's baby? I think it's going to be Max. I think Mac got Yo-Yo pregnant at the end of the episode. Oh, okay. So you, you think she got pregnant at the end? She wasn't pregnant during. Correct, yeah. See, I, so, don't, I, see, I don't think you're right because I think anytime she does hand stuff, he just comes and then it's done. Okay. That's why they purposely avoid that. Can we say that word? on fucking? I'm going to keep it in. Yeah, uh, we can. It's our <laughs> podcast. We can say whatever we want. Also, one thing that I think is interesting about Yo-Yo, they uh, – and I'm hoping it's not budget-wise, but they – the past few episodes, she started to actually use her powers again. She hadn't done that consistently for a long time. I agree. I have a couple of things. She is a much better actress when she's with Mac and in that relationship. I don't know if it's because of Henry Simmons or it's just the believability of that relationship. She is much better as a whole. Also, her hands look fucking terrible. Those gloves have to be so fucking uncomfortable that she has yeah, to when wear. She, when she was drinking a beer, I noticed for the first time, I was like, Ooh. sometimes they look better than others when they have, I think when she's like running, they're more digitally done. But when she was drinking that beer, it just looked it like awful. a Halloween costume. Yeah, it was really bad. Uh, what other theories or questions do you have? Uh I, I think that's my only theory. I don't think Coulson or Sarge or whatever the fuck his name is. I don't think he's dead. 
I think he may even have a strike in him. So why do you think May killed him? I think yeah, she yeah. got kind of or presumably up. killed him. I don't. Yeah. Know I, mean. I why she shot him. That, Again, we don't watch question. the next on the episode, so maybe they explain that there. Yeah, I think I think that because she had that conversation. I don't remember if it was with Yo Yo or with Daisy, but like, hey, it. I couldn't get past the fact that he looked like Coulson, and I think she. The only way for her to truly get over the fact that Coulson is dead and this is not Coulson is to put an end to him. And that's just seems really shot. drastic, right? Like, yeah, that but was, that was that's why the she cavalry had coming out, I guess. But and here's the thing, too. Anytime you mention the cavalry, though, she tucks her tail like she hates that moniker because of how she fucking had to kill a kid. Right. Yeah, so still like, is this not equivalent? You have to kill a kid that you don't know or you have to kill somebody that you've loved for years. Oh, right. That's my point. I don't think she would do that again. I think that one instance scarred her I, so much that if she felt these no, were comparable, she I would. I disagree. I think that she blacks out in those moments, and that's when the cavalry comes out. I don't think she likes to, but she has to. As an expert in blacking out, you might actually have a point there. I got to admit. All right. Anything – I was saying I was the expert in blacking out. You're I understand. Not, you're – you're not better than I am. I'm really good at getting you blacked out. That is true. That is true. You're like my blackout coach. Yep. Just <laughs> one more shot. You can do it. One more. One more. <laughs> Just one more. But before we let the people go, Banner, any last thoughts on Collision Course Part 2 from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D.? No, I agree. I think this was a quote-unquote mid-season finale, even though we have four episodes left uh, for a shortened season. Um, I think... I think shit's really going to – I don't know that shit's any get, anything's going to go down. I think they're really going to posture and set us up for that last season, next season, since this is the first time in a while they know they're getting another season. Yeah, which is really fun. And to hear we only have four episodes left, like that's nothing, man. This thing's going to wrap up fast. It's going to be I, uh, I need to look six up. Six days and we're done. That's nuts. I'm not sure, but I'm assuming – there's no break. Like I'm assuming the next four weeks consecutively we'll have an episode I because of the short season. I believe you're right. I think it's boom, 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 boom. boom and if that's boom, the case, boom. Then I like having the show in the summer because it's just nonstop for the whole time. Yeah, and they didn't even take a break for the fourth, which I thought was really interesting. Yeah, maybe that actually was a mistake though, because I didn't get to watch that episode to like. That's why our review for that came out so late. We apologize. All right, for the Mad Scientist, Brian Banner, I'm the Mayor, Jeff Hornacek, and we are the Bro 4 Squad Podcast. Thank you guys so much for checking us out. Be sure to comment below, give us your theories on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., and check out all of our other stuff. You can follow us on Twitter, at Bro 4 Squad. Check out our reviews on letterboxd.com. Just type in Bro Force Squad. That's three separate words on that website. Type in those... If you type in those same three words on YouTube, iTunes, and Spotify, you can find us there and subscribe to us and find everything we do and our squad blog on our website, bro4squad.com. Till next time, Banner and I have to disarm this lantern-looking nuclear bomb. <laughs> Come on, dude. Her powers are so fucking convenient. Well, let me just quake this thing and then it doesn't move. Get the fuck out of here. That thing would have blown up so fast. <laughs>